Well, I was saying that this object, this um, magnetic object, has uh, right. changed. It changed something in these, uh, in both the uh, Earth objects, Earth, Earth's uh, ancient objects, and um, those objects that are orbiting around the Earth. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you're just changing the the orbits. It's and the magnetic fields, things like that. Well, no, not the orbit. Um, for a very long, they're monitoring. They've been monitoring the uh, signals, uh, pulses, and so forth coming off these objects, their radiation levels, and so forth. Well, um, for the last um, four years, that those energy levels have been uh, exponentially increasing, including those devices in the Earth. Okay. Jesse, now, is it a frequency change that they're seeing? Now, I can't give you definitive. Uh, uh, I can't narrow it down that much, but uh, the, both the radiation, the emissions of energy uh, in these objects okay. has been increasing for the last four years, uh, and it, it does. Uh, it is increasing as this object is coming closer uh, to Earth. Now, you had mentioned on the last show that, that our shields are weaker. And I had noticed that we, we had a CME. It wasn't that strong that came over a night before last, and it gave us a quake in, on the North Pole and the South Pole, not exactly on the poles, but on that section of the Earth. And it, the CME didn't seem to be strong enough. It wasn't one of those giant blasts that you see out there. And as it passed over the Earth, I was watching it, and we had a... a Greenland Sea quake and then weighed down almost in the Arctic on the same fault zone. Now, in the first thing that popped into my mind was what you had said. Could are our fields becoming that weak to where that type of impact can do that much crustal displacement? Actually, they are. They are. Uh, it, it would appear uh, if you look over this by um, through trending or through its history. They are in fact uh, collapsing. It would seem they're, they're very weak. The magnetic, magnetic fields, fields around the Earth, magnetosphere is 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 just uh, it seems to be dissolving. Uh, every day it seems to be dissolving. So it's it's slowly dissipating, which is not so good for the core of the Earth because uh, the the uh, the core of the Earth is controlling that. poles into the earth, uh, making the motors, the electric motor we're dealing with here. That's right. Uh, and something is, is happening. It, is, it de is it a decrease in solar activity causing our, because they say technically if your solar stream stopped, your magnetic fields would collapse. Is it because solar activity is decreasing or is it because of something else? I think that we are intimately tied to the sun's power and our dynamo is losing RPMs. The uh, dynamo that actually causes that, uh, creates that magnetosphere is um, failing or is certainly slowing down in RPMs. They are beginning to print articles uh, discussing the speed of the Earth's core and they made a, uh, a wrong estimate uh, some years back and so that speed was way off target. Um, as they've discovered, you know, with newer technologies, we can peer deeper and deeper into the Earth. Uh, and they have, uh, now this is on the public side, they have admitted that they made a huge mistake in the speed of the core of the Earth. Uh, but they probably did that and published that to compensate for what's actually happening, which is our dynamo is uh, slowing down uh, every day. What does that mean? But we know that it's going to weaken our shields. Is and uh, I guess that alone would be enough for major concern because uh, if if our shields weaken because of our dynamo is weakened, but the solar stream is not, and we have the influence of these outside bodies coming in, it, it's just not a good scenario. No, it's not. Anyway, you talk about it, Michael. I don't know if you were listening to the show. I think it was yesterday. 
a lady had called in and had dreamed about these two objects in space, Earth and another object approaching, and the, the lightning transfer. And she hadn't heard anything about it until, but she said that she was listening to either our show or a Brother Paul's show, and when you called in about this, and she said she hit the floor because it was one of the dream that she had kept. You know how you forget a lot, but this one just mm-hmm. stayed in her mind. And when you said those things, she said it. She was overwhelmed because it was. You described exactly what she saw. And do you see that electrical transfer of this lightning being one of the major problems that we're going to see? It's a, it's a big worry. In fact, I think people should understand that the. The nations understand that, first, there are otherworldly powers. In other words, they they know about the other dimensions. Um, They are quantifying information um, by the nanosecond in um, projecting probabilities of their next move, that with coercement from these other um, powers, which we know them as principalities and powers in the air, they just know it on an intimate level. Um, it, to us, it's a word, it's an idea, it, it's, a, it's, a, um, it, it's something non-tangible at the moment. So it's somewhat amorphous. It, it has no form or shape to us, but they know it intimately and have dealt with the manifestations and the warnings and the orders uh, from this other side. <clears throat> so um, for individuals to have those dreams, warnings, as they would be, um, it's, it's not really surprising uh, due to what I've been exposed to, but the nations are preparing. Uh, they know these electrical discharges can wreak havoc on the surface of the earth. They already know this. There's nothing they can do about it except to uh, attempt to uh, circumvent it through some type of communication and so forth with those entities that they know about. And they they know they can they, they can try to mitigate the the problem, but there's really nothing like you said nothing they can do about it. No. What do you what do you see? You you told us about watch for the changing colors in the skies. I think maybe a lot of times in the in the sunset things like that. Mm-hmm. What do you what do you see the first impacts that we will know? In other words, we've got the skies changing, thunder, a lot, extreme lightning. Is that going to be tied in with these straight line winds you're talking about? Yeah, that'll happen too. And you know what, Jesse, the first model that was developed in, 19, uh, in the 1980s, the first indication everyone was looking for were um, uh, birds dying, and then the fish dying, and then um, fish beaching themselves. Now, this was in a computer model in the 80s what to look for at the approach of uh, these objects that were spotted in 1985. And so birds are largely affected by magnetic changes. They're also affected by uh, neurological conditions that are caused by um, uh, increased energies or fluctuations of energies in the atmosphere. Now, we're walking on the ground. We can't actually uh, feel that energy all the time. Birds flying at higher altitudes can certainly be affected by magnetosphere changes and fluctuations in energy in the magnetosphere. Certain parts of the Earth, which are on ley lines, and those uh, those uh, offset to the angles of the ley lines, um, people will likely find dead animals. They'll find a correlation between the ley lines and a lot of dead animals dropping over dead. And so they give all these explanations, of course, why they're dying. But the magnetosphere is, is, is affected greatly by these um, approaching objects, affected greatly. And at some point, we will entertain um, high-energy transfers from one body to the other. Right. Now, how, how can our – like, Anthony, you, you, I think you're still with us. How – how, I mean, it doesn't seem that our electrical grid could stand this for very long. You know, we're looking at one of the in, uh, one of the indications of this happening. It looks like an overload, a, a Carrington event on a mega scale, uh, you know, mega scale Carrington event. Are you speaking with me, Justin? When you talk about that much energy, you know. 
is that directed to me, Jesse? Uh, yes. Hello? And, and Anthony, yeah, both, both of you guys. Oh, and Anthony by the way, how you doing, Anthony? It, it's good to meet you. I'm sorry I didn't say that before. No, it's great to meet you as well. I, I think we um, have some dovetailing information here. Yes, I think, Jesse, we're moving into yeah, definitely an overload situation electrically, but I want to give Michael the floor, but I have one quick question for Michael. Are you speaking in terms of um, pyramids when you're describing the Earth-based um, structures that are being affected by these energies? Well, the pyramids and also some of the ancient ruins, uh, they contain obelisks. And um, in, in most cases, they will keep these, uh, they keep them guarded. The ruins are guarded, but a lot of people miss the fact that some of the stones of what they think are stones are actually uh, devices. They're just at a massive scale. It's hard to identify them as a, a component to something. It would, it would be compared to a uh, transistor. Uh, being uh, taken out of a circuit board and then, um, you know, left on the ground somewhere. But they know how to put these, they know what these parts do. They know what this ancient technology does. The problem is they can't harness the energy source that uh, activates them. And it just so happens that this external energy is beginning to activate these things. And they're going to time everything just right to harness what they need to to accomplish what they need to accomplish with uh, um, the dimensions. I have a quick question, Jesse, and then I'm just going to let you take over there. But um, Michael, do you have a timetable? I think that's what a lot of people tend to focus in on. Yeah, well, I can, to be honest, I can't give a timetable. I can give you what to look for. Of course, we have the dead birds, but the sky changing colors in all different uh, matter of colors, which could be taken as an aurora and so forth, at sunset where they're most visible, will be one of the um, predominant signs right before the large energy transfers. We will see things before that like high winds, uh, abrupt storms, uh, lightning storms that are probably 100 times more powerful than we've experienced in the past. But when the, sky, when the energy um, gets at a certain point, a tipping point, the skies will become very charged, causing uh, very beautiful colors to swim through the sky. That will be, at that, at that point, uh, people will know they're in, uh, you know, we're, we're there. We're at that tipping point, so. There's, Jesse, can I ask one there's quick really question? No, there's, no, there's no ETA, right? There's no estimated time of arrival or... Any way to project well, that compared to uh, observations from, say, seven years ago to now or anything, Michael? You know, Jesse, in, in, um, when they discovered several, eight large bodies, and one was in 72, one was in 80, 1980, and the other was in 1983, when they discovered and confirmed these large bodies, um, the greater half of them did not seem to follow any type of physics. In other words, they were taking their own route. Right, random. Does that, does that help answer? But uh, that's why a timeline cannot be given and, and the calculations are being made. I mean, they can track movements and so forth, but on a few of them, it's useless to do that. So you have to look for the uh, signs in the earth to determine. Well, you approach. know that it's... It's interesting because I read an article to where they had discovered, they were looking into the uh, inner workings of the uh, solar system, uh, and the, our, the Milky Way, excuse me, and they have found a group of stars that are doing what you're saying. There's no random, I mean, there's no pattern. They don't seem to be emanating from a certain area. They are escaping from that, and, and uh, there's... It's very random. There's no way to project what they're doing. It sounds a lot like what you're saying there, but have, have you seen that report? Yeah, I've, I've, I'm privy to um, portions of that, and you're right. They have no, um, they have no uh, as we know physics, they have no um, pattern to them, so no mathematical. <clears throat> you're just changing the, the orbits it's, and the magnetic fields, things like that? Well, no. Not the orbit. Um, 
for a very long, they're monitoring, they've been monitoring the uh, signals, uh, pulses and so forth coming off these objects, their radiation levels and so forth. Well, um, for the last um, four years, that those energy levels have been of energy uh, but in these objects okay. has been increasing for the last four years, uh, and it, it does, uh, it is increasing as this object is coming closer uh, to Earth. Now, you had mentioned on the last show that, that our shields are weaker. And I had noticed that we, we had a CME. It wasn't that strong that came over a night before last, and it gave us a quake in, on the North Pole and the South Pole, not exactly on the poles, but on that section of the Earth. And it, the CME didn't seem to be strong enough. It wasn't one of those giant blasts that you see out there. And as it passed over the Earth, I was watching it, and we had a... a Greenland Sea quake and then weighed down almost in the Arctic on the same fault zone. Now, well, I was saying that this object, this um, magnetic object, has uh, right. changed. It changed something in these, uh, in both the uh, Earth objects, Earth, Earth's uh, ancient objects, and um, those objects that are orbiting around the Earth. Okay. Now, uh, exponentially increasing, including those devices in the Earth. Oh, Jesse, can now, you hear is me? it a frequency change that they're seeing? Now, I can't give you definitive. Uh, uh, I can't narrow it down that much, but uh, the, both the radiation, the emission 